Good morning, Cairn Castle. Lovely to see you all. Welcome to church today. Lovely to see a nice big crowd getting up close to Christmas. If you're visiting with us, a special word of welcome to you. If you're watching this online, hi, thanks for joining us. Just before we begin, you've already seen a number of announcements up there on the screen. I'm not going to go through them all. Could I just draw your attention to a couple of particular ones? At the end of this service, we're having a very short meeting of the congregation. It's just a little bit of official business that has to be done with a congregational meeting, just asking you to witness something. So that is at the end of this service. I'll ask you to sit down again for a couple of extra minutes. Then uh, this Wednesday night, if you've all dressed up and no place to go, I've got the very place for you. We're having Christmas dinner in the hall and Smarty's uh, catering, which is always good. So if you'd like to come along, here's and I are going. We're really looking, looking forward to it. My cooking normally isn't so good, you know. But uh, Wednesday night, we're in for a real treat with a lovely Christmas dinner. If you'd like to come along as well, make sure you get your name on the sheet in the vestibule uh, before you go home today. And then the other thing, just to mention again briefly that if uh, you're looking for a little stocking filler for a friend, then you might want to consider one of these. This little book that I had published a few years ago, a little collection of prayers and reflections, Fiverr. And uh, get one for yourself, one for a friend. There you go. That's you sorted for Christmas for £10. <laughs> anyway, there it is. It's there. It's available. And the proceeds go to Mission Aviation Fellowship and A21, which is an organization that combats human trafficking. Right. I think that's all of that for now. Let's worship God. We're going to begin by declaring some words of Scripture from Psalm 98. And we'll do our usual thing. I'll do the verses in white, and we do the ones in yellow all together. So if we can have the first couple of verses, please. <coughs> this is the Word of God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Let them sing before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. May God bless his word to us here in Cairn Castle today. Can I invite our singers to come forward, please? We'd like to sing a song to bring us into worship, Emmanuel.
Now, did you know, did you know that the, of all the religions in the world, Christianity is the one that is the most marked by singing? Did you know that? And that's because, Christians, we have been given something to sing about, the grace of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. So would you like to join with us now and stand and we'll sing together our opening hymn, O Worship the King, All Glorious above. Gratefully sing his power and his love. We stand to sing.
The good news of God's grace in Jesus means that flawed human beings like us are allowed to come into the presence of the Almighty, our Maker, and speak with Him. We're allowed to pray. So let's do it, shall we? Let me lead you first of all, and in a moment, we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Almighty God, gracious Father in heaven, we come into your holy presence and we bow our heads with respect and reverence because you and you alone are God. You are the maker. You are the all-powerful one. In some ways, you're a little bit frightening. And yet, we don't have to be afraid when we trust in Jesus because you have shown your love and your mercy to the world. You sent your own son, Lord Jesus, son of God. You came and you came as that little baby in Bethlehem. You became a human being like us and you lived here for a while on earth. And people could come to you and find that you were welcoming and you were kind. You healed people who were sick. You fed people who were hungry. You gave great encouragement to those who who were distressed in one, kind, in one way or another. You also told the truth. And the truth in one way is a little bit uncomfortable because the truth is we all have sinned against God and we have all fallen short of what we're supposed to be. But thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came to deal with that, that you gave your life on the cross, that whosoever believes in you can be forgiven, and will not perish, but have everlasting life. So we're coming and we're singing. We're glad. We have something to sing about. Your amazing grace and goodness to the world. Dear Lord, accept our songs of praise, our prayers. <coughs> Help us to lift up not just our voices, but our very hearts and our lives to you. And to live in such a way as to serve and please you every day. So may we know your ongoing grace and blessing the presence of your Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us and to help us. Hear these and all our prayers which we offer to you now. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray like this, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver <coughs> us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now this is the second Sunday in Advent, and so I'm going to invite Heather and Lucy to come and light our second Advent candle for us. Thank you, ladies. Peace. As Abraham embarked on his journey into the unknown, he put his trust in God, and God gave him peace. The same peace that God offers to us today. Lord, let us find peace, deep, lasting peace in this holy season, and guide us on our journey to Bethlehem, along with all of the members of our Kerncastle family and the world. We ask you to help us in choosing deep and lasting peace this second week of Advent, symbolised by the lighting of the candle of peace and preparation. Choose to make peace a part of your day, every day. Peace on your journey, today and always. Thank you, Heather and Lucy. Let's hear God's word, shall we? Reading from Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. This is God's word. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi. That's a, a foreign word. What does it mean? Wise men, wise people, learned people. 
the scientists, the professors, the experts of the day. These people who lived in the east came traveling to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Amen. May God bless his word to us here in Cairn Castle today. Boys and girls, lovely to see you in church. I'm wondering, would you like to come up to the front and perhaps sit here on the carpet? Because I have another story I'd like to tell you. And uh, if you come up here and sit just here, you'll, you'll see and you'll hear really well. Hello, thank you very much. Oh, good boys, well done. Hi guys, Adeline, this way, love. <laughs> Just right here, pet. Hello. Hi, Harry, how are you? Hello, Ruby. If we just sit down right here. Oh, don't go away again. Come back and sit down. Have a wee seat. Lovely. Come on ahead. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good man. Thank you very much. Can you find your way through? And just set that over there. Thank you very much. Anybody else coming? Oh, yes. Hi, Harry. Hi, Grace. Nice to see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Come, do you know what? We'll, 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 could you set that over in the, under the tree for us, please? Thank you very much. That is a giant one, isn't it? Yes. There's going to be lots of boys. Just have a wee sit down. There's going to be lots of boys and girls very happy because of those gifts that you've brought. Thank you very much indeed. Now, there's a song. Oh, can we maybe just move that way very slightly and make room for everybody? Thank you. There's a song we sometimes sing on a Saturday morning. Uh, and I'm not sure. Do we have words for it? Have we got some words? Oh, yes. You've got words for all the choruses there on a Saturday morning. Let's have a wee look and see if we can find. You're all right. Thank you, Valerie. That's the one. Thank you very much indeed. <coughs> so, here's the, the song we're thinking about. And I've got then a really quite exciting story. Now, I'm sorry the words are a little bit small for some of you sitting way back there. But let me just read them out. Because some of us already know this from a Saturday. And some of the grown-ups might know this from a long time ago. Because some of us sang this song... Some of us sang the song Adeline when we were your age. Daniel was a man of prayer. Daily he prayed three times. How many times? That's right. Until one day they had him cast in a den of lions. Hungry lions. Who would like to be thrown into a den of hungry lions? Oh, don't tell anybody just yet. Okay, fine. And does your Nana read you Bible stories? Isn't that wonderful? Well done, Nana. Total hero. Reading Bible stories to your grandchildren. That's brilliant. In the den, in the den, fear could not alarm him. God just shut the lion's mouths so they could not harm him. Now I'm wondering, maybe Isla, would you mind holding the words for us? Would you? If you would stand up and hold the words beside me, thank you. For all the boys and girls here to see. And uh, let's see. How many of you grown-ups know this one? How many of you remember this, singing this in Sunday school? Okay, no excuse then. No excuse then. Okay. <laughs> Daniel was a man of prayer. Daily he prayed three times. Till one day they had him cast in the den of lions. In the den, in the den, fears could not alarm him. God just shut the lion's mouth so they could not harm him. Oh, that wasn't bad for a 
first go, but I think you could sing a little bit better. Did I bump your head? I'm sorry. So when we get to God just shut, and what we do is we clap our hands, one big clap. God just shut the lion's mouth. If you come out that way a little bit, then maybe I'll not be bumping your head. Thank you. So we'll go again, shall we? Ready, everybody? Oh, one, two, three, four. Daniel was a Daily he prayed three times Till one day they had him cast In the den of lions In the den, in the den Fears could not alarm him God just the lion's mind So they could not harm him Boys and girls, that was... Did you notice some of the mums and dads were a bit slow on the clapping? So they were a little bit bad. So we'll give them one more chance to do it on time. God just... God just... Daniel was a man Daily he prayed Till one day they had come In the den of in the dead, in the dead, fears did not alarm him. God just shut the lion's mouth so they could not. Oh, give yourselves a clap. That was very good. Well done. Now, let me see. Where's the, uh, where is the, there it is over there. Excuse me. So yeah, long, long ago, long before even Jesus was born, thanks Isla, even before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, like hundreds of years before that, there was a dude called Daniel. What was his name? Daniel, Daniel yeah. And Daniel came from Jerusalem, where? Jerusalem, yeah, which was really special in, at a time, but Jerusalem had been overrun by enemies. Enemies had come, they'd invaded, and they'd attacked it, and they'd destroyed it, and they'd burned down the beautiful temple and everything, and people had to run away, and some of the people were taken prisoner. And Daniel was one of those prisoners. He was taken prisoner away to a country called Babylon. What was it called? Babylon. And Babylon was a big kingdom, and it had a big king who was, well, really, whatever he said, that was the law. If he said, I don't like that man. Chop his head off. Well, they would. It's dreadful. That's the way it was back in those days. And the kings, just whatever they said, that's what happened. Now, that's where Daniel lived. And he served that king. He had to. He had no choice. But actually, Daniel worked really hard. And he was very clever. He studied hard, and he learned his lessons well, and the king thought he was really useful. He was, one of, he was one of the king's best employees. And so the king was going to put him in charge of all the wise men and all the civil servants in Babylon. But some people didn't like that. Some of the other wise men, some of the other experts and professors of the day, they were a little bit jealous they didn't like Daniel being so popular with the king. And so they said, let's see if we can get him in trouble. Let's see if we can find him doing something bad, and then we'll get him in trouble. And, and he won't be so important anymore. And so they watched him very carefully, day by day by day. But you know what, boys and girls? They couldn't find Daniel doing anything wrong. Daniel didn't do anything wrong. Daniel was a really good man. And he served the king very faithfully. He served the country. Even though it wasn't his country, he worked very hard and he was really, really good. So they said, we're going to have to try and find out something bad about him. The only thing they noticed was that he prayed. How many times a day? That's right. We were singing it just a moment ago, weren't we? Daniel prayed three times every day. Now, you can pray more than that if you want, but at least three times a day, Daniel would open his door as his window west towards Jerusalem, where he'd come from, because that helped him remember about God. 
And he would face towards Jerusalem and he would pray at least three times a day. And these enemies, they saw him doing that. And they said, maybe we could set a trap for him. And so they went to the king. And do you remember the kings in those days sort of, they thought they were pretty, they thought they were just the bee's knees. And so these people came and they said, oh, your majesty, oh, your majesty, we have a wonderful idea. We think that for a whole month, Nobody should be allowed to pray to anyone else except to you, your majesty, because you're just like a god to us. And the king thought that was quite a cool idea. And so he said, all right. And they said, can we make that the law? Will you sign it? And so, yes, the king signed it. So it couldn't be changed. And the enemies thought, Daniel, ha! We've got him. And so they went the next day and they watched. And Daniel knew about the law. But Daniel knew that wasn't a good law. He knew that he shouldn't really pray to the king. He knew that really we should just pray to God. And so he did. He prayed to God, same as usual. And the enemies came in. They burst in the door and they said, Ha! We've got you. You shouldn't be doing that. You're in trouble now. We're going to throw you into a den of hungry lions. Oh dear. And the king was really sad. Because the king really did like Daniel. And Daniel was really good. But the king had made the law and he'd signed it and everything. So he had to do what he'd said. And so that night they took Daniel. And they threw him into a big cave full of hungry And the king said, Daniel, I hope your God is able to rescue you. The king went into his palace and he tried to sleep. But the king couldn't sleep. He was so worried. He was so anxious. He couldn't sleep. And all night long, he paced up and down. And, he, and eventually, very early in the morning, he came to the den. And he called out, just like you, he called out, Daniel, Daniel, are you still alive? Are you okay? Has your God been able to rescue you? And back came a voice. Yes, your majesty, I'm all right, thank you. I'm fine, thank you. Look, there's a couple of hungry lions there, can you see? He's a very hungry looking lion there. But he doesn't look very happy because he wasn't allowed to eat Daniel, you see. He was hoping he was going to have a nice prophet called Daniel for his supper that night. But he didn't because, Daniel explained, God sent his angel. And the angel wouldn't let the lions eat me. And the king was really pleased. He said, oh, I'm so glad, Daniel. That was a silly law I made. I'll try and not make any more laws like that again. And he put Daniel in charge of all the clever men. All the clever people in Babylon. All the professors and experts. Daniel became the one who was in charge of them. And so people listened to what Daniel would say. And they would write down some of the things that he said. And they remembered them. So that years and years and years later, when we come to the New Testament, guess what? We find some people coming all the way from the East Babylon, came looking for the king, a new king. They had seen something strange in the sky. Maybe a supernova or something like that. Star. Yeah, the star. They saw something. That's exactly right. And they saw that and they said, oh, that must mean something. Maybe God who made the stars is trying to tell us something. Maybe there's a new king. Absolutely. You're, you should be telling this story more than me. You're even better than I am. And uh, they came looking. And they had gifts for the king. 
And they came and they saw baby Jesus, who was just still very young, and they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh because they remembered Daniel in the lion's den and they remembered what Daniel had said, that one day God would set up his kingdom. God would send his king. And while some of the other kings would grow old and die, the king that God has given us will never die and his kingdom will never end. And here we are centuries later in Ireland and we're still serving King Jesus. His kingdom will never end. It will go on forever and ever and ever. When we trust and follow him, we live with him forever. He did indeed, good man. So thank you for listening so nicely. Would you like to go back to your seats now? Because we're going to sing the song again all together. But you can go back to your seats now. All righty. And we're going to sing, come and join the celebration. See? So, after this, uh, boys and girls go to Sunday school, and then if you come back in again at the end, just for the short meeting, that would be lovely. Thank you. Would you like to stand with me? We'll sing, Come and Join the Celebration. Okay, boys and girls, see you again at the end. Time for Sunday school now. <laughs> All right. So let's continue celebrating, shall we? Let's continue worshipping. Let's bring our <coughs> offerings to God now. Your offering will be received. Thank you very much.
Let's pray, shall we? Thank you, O God. We praise you because you are a faithful God. You keep your word. Thank you for looking after Daniel in the lion's den. Thank you for preserving the words that he spoke all those centuries so that wise people knew to come looking for your kingdom. We thank you that we got to hear about your kingdom as well, that it came as far as Ireland all those centuries ago. Thank you, O Lord, that we have been brought up in church and had the opportunity, many of us from we were young children, to hear the good news of Jesus. Dear Lord, we bring our gifts. We bring our thanks and our worship to you. We pray that these gifts would help to honor and glorify the name of Jesus, our Savior, here and much further afield too. Hear our prayers, which we offer in Jesus' name to God our Father, with the help of the Spirit. Amen. It's not a lovely rendition of Silent Night by Dr. Gurley, our music leader. Well done, Sylvia. Thank you. Lovely. We're going to sing all of us again now. The first Noel, the the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. We all stand and sing the first Noel. (coughs)
Let's hear God's word again. I'm going to read a little bit from the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. Read a selection of verses from this chapter, beginning at verse 1. This is God's word. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. And he wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven churning up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the others, came up out of the sea. He describes a little bit of each of these beasts. And then as he's speaking about the fourth one, which seems to be even more terrifying than all the others, verse 9, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Amen. May God bless his word to us here today. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 7 comes at a real low point in Israel's history. The kingdom that had been built up under David and Solomon had been divided and then overrun. Jerusalem, Solomon's once magnificent temple, now lay in ruins. The population had been massacred or scattered. The cream of their youth deported and forced to serve the king of Babylon, Daniel was one of those young people. And he actually lived there a lifetime. He served in a succession of foreign kings' administrations. And there's no record, of which I'm aware, of Daniel ever returning to the city of his birth. So let's understand this dream, this vision... Not just a random dream, but actually a vision given by God with a very specific meaning. This was given to a member of a threatened minority in exile in a foreign country and culture. And we could see parallels with present day Christians in China or North Korea or indeed in some parts of an increasingly hostile, secular Western world. To a vulnerable but godly remnant, the Lord grants an amazing vision and a wonderful promise. Daniel was given to see a number of frightening beasts, really monsters, 
rather surreal in their appearance. It becomes clear that these beasts represent Babylon and some of the empires that would follow, like Persia, Greece, Rome. There will be numerous human kingdoms and empires that will be seen to flourish upon earth at different times in different places. Some of them may feature cruel dictators. For a time, they will seem invincible. But their day will pass. And then, as Daniel is, is, is witnessing, really uh, quite horrified with these, this picture of these, these dreadful beast-like kingdoms, it's as if a curtain is pulled back to reveal a greater perspective. Daniel is granted a glimpse into the throne room of heaven. And he sees the one who is really in charge of heaven and earth. All of earth's proud kings and kingdoms must answer to the ultimate authority of Almighty God. So, let's understand something here this morning. Above the supreme courts, as we call them, the human courts of earth, there is a higher seat of judgment. And there, careful records are kept of every human deed and attitude. Now, some people don't like the idea of God being a judge. But in the context of Daniel's dream, it's actually very encouraging, comforting. For people who have suffered or are suffering injustice and cruelty at the hands of corrupt, beast-like people and institutions in this world, here is reassurance. Yeah, there may be painful challenge in the present there may be days when life seems grossly unfair, but God has set a day in the future when he will judge all things. There will be justice in the end. And God is in this vision described as the ancient of days. It's quite an unusual phrase. It occurs only here. It's not common elsewhere in the Bible. The ancient of days, that suggests the eternal one, the one who was already there before the earth and its days were created. It's a blazing fire that always symbolizes God's holiness, his purity. A vast number, 10,000 times 10,000, that's 100 million people. 100 million are seen waiting upon the king of heaven and earth, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Again, let's, let's earth this in our present experience when we observe the at times devastating power of governments and their armies, the destructive power of guns and bombs. We can again find comfort in this heavenly perspective of a much higher and a much greater power. Do you remember something Jesus said to reassure his followers? Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said this, Don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. And then Jesus goes on to reassure those who have this reverence, this trust in God. And he speaks kindly. The first statement seems perhaps quite somber and sober and pretty, pretty, uh, pretty challenging. But then he goes on to comfort and, and reassure those who, who take it seriously and who trust in God and who have reverence and obedience for him. Jesus goes on, he says this, Listen, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? They seem worthless. 
yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. Your Father in heaven sees the sparrow, the tiniest little bird that seems of such little consequence. Your Father in heaven cares about every little detail. Even the very hairs of your head are all numbered, said Jesus. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. And here's where Daniel's dream becomes less of a nightmare and more a promising vision. He sees one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven, being given authority by God to establish his kingdom on earth. So just as these beasts seem to be rampaging and creating havoc on the earth, just as human kingdoms seem to be at their darkest, their most corrupt. What does Daniel see? He is given to see a human being of heavenly origin, bringing about a new kind of rule. In the midst, in the very midst of humans acting like ferocious beasts, heaven invades earth with everlasting light. Daniel's vision was carefully recorded. It was preserved. Daniel was greatly respected among the, the professors and the experts and the learned people in Babylon. Years, generations passed. The kingdoms that he predicted, that he saw in this vision, rose and fell. Babylon fell. Persia came and went. Greece, Alexander the Great, expanded. And then the Greek Empire, it passed as well. Rome came. And six centuries later, Eastern scholars who knew Daniel's words, who were familiar with Daniel's vision, saw an unusual light in the heavens. And they said, God is telling us something. And they came looking for the kingdom of God. A divine king wrapped in vulnerable flesh, born in poverty, laid in a manger, rejected, crucified, yet raised in all glory and authority, whose message of grace and love is still captivating hearts and changing lives worldwide to this day. This is our God, the servant king, who calls us now, Cairn Castle, to follow him. Above the desperate uncertainty of all human activity. It's not the word we hear constantly on the news. It's uncertain how this is going to develop. It's uncertain what the future is going to hold in Israel or Gaza or Ukraine or wherever. As it comes to the end of the year, you'll watch the documentaries and you'll see the footage and you'll have this expert and that expert giving their opinion. It's uncertain how things will happen in 24. No one has a clue. And against all that dreadful, frightening uncertainty, over and above, reigns one to whom all authority has been given. He is more than able to preserve his people in a foreign land, in an alien culture. He can save his servants from the lion's den. He can preserve his word of truth through dark ages to spring fresh light for generations to come. So, let's rest assured today, this Christmas season. Let's rest assured. Let's be comforted by this. The meek who hunger and thirst for God, who seek first his kingdom and righteousness, will one day inherit the earth and share their master's resurrection glory. The darkness is deep. And it is painful, but it will pass. The light is eternal. Daniel's vision ends with this promise that Jesus and his holy people will rule forever. Well then, what shall we do meantime? What shall we do? We're still in the dark bit, aren't we? What are we to do? 
How should Christians live in the present, surrounded by darkness and suffering, often threatened with persecution? First of all, we must keep on trusting in the king. In the valley of the darkest shadow, we can know the comfort of the good shepherd, King Jesus. We must keep on trusting the king. Secondly, we must keep hold of his word. Preserve it. Study it. Don't water it down. Practice it. And share this message of urgent truth with any who will listen. In refreshing contrast to some of the flattering myths of this world with which we're surrounded daily. We must keep on trusting the king. We must keep hold of his word. And we must keep on looking for the coming of God's kingdom. In all kinds of little ways, day by day, and in a day yet to come, in fullness of glory and power, when Christ will return on the clouds with his angels to gather us home. So, now, to Jesus, the Son of Man and Son of God, with the Father and the Spirit, be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, O God, for your servant Daniel. Thank you for his faithfulness to you, even as a tiny minority in a, an alien and at times quite hostile culture. Thank you for his words, so carefully recorded and preserved over the centuries, and still speaking your truth, still teaching to this very day. Dear Lord, we pray that these truths would take root deep in our minds and our hearts, that we would be reassured, that we would be comforted by your promise that the kingdom and the future belong to you, that your kingdom, the kingdom of Christ and his people, is the kingdom that will last forever. May we be greatly reassured today and dear Lord, may we be challenged too to be very certain that we are in your kingdom and that we are following in the ways of our King. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. May your spirit now bring it home to us with great effect for your glory. Amen. Our closing praise just now is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. We stand to sing, and then there'll be a short prayer, and uh, I'll ask you to take your seats again.
Our Father in heaven, will you remain with us now as our guest of honor by your spirit as we remain in fellowship together. Thank you for all your grace and help so far today. Thank you for the refreshments provided. Hear us as we pray together for your ongoing grace day by day. As we say, now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.